at streetgangs.com, SGTV. We're in downtown Los Angeles, sitting in on the Johannes Meserly trial, the former BART police officer who's accused of killing Oscar Grant on that BART train stop, the Fruitvale train stop up in Oakland. And today we heard from witnesses that the prosecution brought in that were mostly people who videotaped the events on that New Year's morning. Uh, they're brought in to authenticate the tapes and to provide details on what they saw. And one of the witnesses, Jamil Duar, he was actually videotaping the incident from his cell phone camera. And he happens to have also been with Oscar Grant on that day. He was one of the few people, I believe he's the only person that videotaped that actually knew Oscar Grant and was with Oscar Grant. One of the things that we learned more about today was what happened in car one of that train. During opening statements, there were a lot of uh, things that were mentioned about what happened in car one. Was there a fight on car one? Was there a tussle? Was there a disagreement? Uh, but today we learned that there was somewhat of a physical confrontation between Oscar Grant and an individual named David who's known as Diesel. Uh, that came in while we were listening to Jamil Duar's testimony uh, about what he saw in car one. He was actually in car one. The car one was extremely crowded and it was very difficult to see from most of the witnesses what was going on in car one, but we did learn that there was a confrontation between Oscar Grant and either the father, David, or his son, which is also named David. During cross-examination, the defense tried to suggest that this confrontation that Oscar Grant had with David was somehow gang-related because from previous interviews during the investigation of this whole incident, there had been some mention of being from the West and that David or David's son was from the West and that Oscar Grant somehow was upset about that and that might have been the catalyst to the conflict that happened between Oscar Grant and David on car one of that train. But whatever happened was short. Um, it kind of spilled out onto the platform for a moment and then that's when Anthony Peroni, the first BART officer, came on the scene and then at that point the fight pretty much ended. David and his son went back on train, on car one of the train and Oscar Grant and the rest of his friends got off, went onto the platform, but then as the police officer got closer, Anthony Peroni, uh, Oscar Grant and two others from that group, which was I believe nine or ten people, got back on the train. Three people got back on the train and one of those persons that got back on the train was Jamil Duar who testified today about what he saw and what he videotaped on his cell phone. And one of the things that I found quite interesting was that the defense attorney was really trying to emphasize the conflict between Oscar Grant and David as being somewhat gang related and during the whole course of questioning the prosecution did not object one time to this line of questioning, which I thought was kind of unusual because one, whatever was going on in car one uh, wasn't really that relevant to the shooting that Johan Meserly uh, did on Oscar Grant. A lot of the things that were learned about what happened in car one, you know, came after the fact. So it wasn't as if Johan Meserly or the other BART officers felt that they were confronting individuals that may have been gang related. And I think at some point the judge realized that because he called a sidebar right during the questioning of these of these kind of these issues when defense attorney Michael Raines was alluding to these gang allegations. And then when Michael Raines continued on with the questioning, uh, he went in another direction. So it's pretty clear that the judge may have not felt comfortable with these questions uh, because anytime you bring up gang allegations, uh, in front of a jury, it can certainly bias and prejudice uh, this the case.